If you wanna find out how to manage my operating systems, my containers, on-premises in other clouds, and even bring Azure Data Services to my on-premises, to other clouds, we're gonna find out in this video. Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to explore Azure Arc, a fairly new capability. And if we take a step back, when we think about Azure, we have all of these different capabilities. There are data services, there are compute services, storage, machine learning, and all of these are provided by the Azure Resource Manager. So there are resource providers, and those resource providers enable resources. Azure SQL Database is a type of resource. A storage account is a type of resource. And so we have this Azure Resource Manager. And there's a bunch of other things that we take advantage of in Azure, things around update management. We can think about backup. We think about tagging. We think about policy. We have all of these capabilities that are exposed through the Azure Resource Manager. And this policy one is super important because not only does it apply a certain kind of configuration, but I can check on that configuration. I can check the compliance of my environment. Say, well, hey, look, I applied this configuration. Um, who's actually compliant with that? And when we think about policy, there are really two kind of branches of policy. There are policies that apply to kind of that arm the fabric level then there's also these kind of in-guest policies. We might think about the PowerShell desired state configuration. We're actually going into the operating system and applying a certain configuration. And historically, all of these things have been restricted to use of Azure services. Of course, RBAC, another big one, role-based access control. So the point of Azure Arc is to really think about extending this. All these great services, these are back, the update management, the tagging, so I can have metadata, so I can easily search inventory on the things I have, that policy capability. We have great things like log analytics or Azure monitor logs, as we now call it. We want to extend that to our resources on premises. I want to extend it to even resources in other clouds. And that's the goal of Azure Arc. And there's really three parts to Azure Arc today. We'll start off with the first one. That's really about operating systems. So if I think about in Azure, if I have kind of a, a virtual machine, there's actually kind of an agent that's installed in that virtual machine that enables it to talk to the Azure Fabric, enables the Azure Fabric to talk to it. There are various identity services so I can have role-based access control so it can go and interact with other Azure services like Keybolt, for example. So we can have all these extensions installed into this virtual machine, all of these great capabilities like policy and tagging and role-based access control. Then we hook into update management and Azure monitor logs, all of these great things. And it's really this agent that powers a lot of that. So the first part of Azure Arc is about management of server operating systems outside of Azure. So I could think about, well, hey, look, on premises, I have a host. Now, this can manage physical and virtual because what it's gonna do is actually install its own agent. So I'm gonna have this kind of cloud agent gets installed onto my operating system. So it doesn't really care if this is a physical box or if it's a virtual machine. It doesn't care if it's Windows or Linux. It supports those things. So it's gonna have this agent installed into the operating system. And the way this works is I create these Arc resources in Azure and I get a script. Now I could kind of run that one at a time. Um, there's bulk deployment options as well. The best practice is to create a service principle that I'll actually use to register this agent that gets installed into Azure. And when I do that, a representation of the OS instance is kind of projected into Azure, an avatar, if you will. 
And then through that avatar, I can do role-based access control. I can tag the server. I can apply policy. And I think this is the biggest one for me today. I think about the policy, in particular, this in-guest policy. I can apply configurations into that operating system, not just to apply configuration, but to then check compliance. And again, I'm drawing this, hey, against my operating systems on premises. However, yes, all of this, this is Azure. But I could just as easily have other. This could be, well, actually my AWS. This could project, this agent could be installed on operating system instances in AWS. Then their avatar would be projected into Azure. I could do role-based access control. I could do the policy. I could do the tagging for that inventory type purposes. I could then push certain extensions that have been updated because this agent does work a little bit differently. Um, behind the scenes, the way the identity is actually function is different. In Azure, there's an identity kind of component. When it's this agent, it has to kind of run inside that component. So the extension has to behave a little bit differently. It's not every Azure extension will work. Uh, most of them will. So now, no matter kind of where our operating systems are, Windows or Linux, physical or virtual, we can now have this OS instance represented in Azure. It's going to have an object. And if I actually quickly go and look, here's an example of a machine I actually have. So I can see here it's a, an Azure Arc. And I can see I have options around access control. I have tagging. I have policies. I can hook into the logging. So I've got these now capabilities across not just the things in Azure, but anything I'm using Azure Arc to project to. And that's really kind of a, a powerful feature of this to be able to have this kind of capability. If we jump back. So that's Azure Arc for servers. That's about, hey, I want to project my server into Azure so I can do my role-based access control, my tagging, my inventory, my ingest policy, my compliance across my entire hybrid environment. Next very common thing we have outside of a, an operating system, there's kind of been this, this movement to containers. And with a virtual machine, I virtualize the hardware. I create a virtual machine that's got virtualized CPU, memory, storage, network. With a container, we virtualize the operating system. I can have these containers that have isolated namespaces within a shared operating system potentially. And really, the container, that isolated namespace is only half of the story. The bigger thing is the orchestration. I need something to actually create the containers, to manage the images, to make sure they're healthy. So we have an orchestration layer. And really that solution is Kubernetes. So we have this, we call it K8S, Kubernetes. So the next part of Azure Arc is Kubernetes management. And once again, I could have Kubernetes clusters I could have them on premises. I could have them in other clouds. And now what we're going to do is we're going to enable those to be managed through Azure Arc. So the first part was management of servers. Second part is management of Kubernetes environments. And the way this actually works is we're actually using GitOps. You might say, well, what, what's GitOps? I'm used to DevOps. What's this GitOps thing? GitOps, the idea around this is a very popular cloud service is GitHub. And GitOps is all about, well, in GitHub, I have a repository where I store things. I store my application. I store my desired configuration. And what we're actually going to do with the Kubernetes management, that arm of Azure Arc, is two things. We once again, we're going to focus on pushing policy to those Kubernetes environments. But then we're actually going to do a GetOps setup. Now we use something called Flux. And what Flux really does is it points the Kubernetes environment to 
a certain repository. And I could have multiple Kubernetes environments pointing to the same repository, so they would have the same configuration. I could use different ones. So I use policy to configure the Flux component to point to a certain repository. And then that Flux is actually going to go and pull down those configurations and kind of make it so in the environment. So when I update the GitHub repository of my, my new code, my new configuration, well, that's automatically going to flow down. And it's a pull model. The Kubernetes clusters pull down that configuration from GitHub. So they can be hardened. I don't have to have people connecting into them. They are pulling the changes from GitHub. When I publish into GitHub, they're then going to get pulled by the clusters that point to it. So policy is going to get used to configure the source of where they're going to pull from. And then they're going to use the GitOps to actually pull it. And again, that's via Flux. And I deploy this, I could deploy it using Helm initially in my Kubernetes environment. It's going to set up uh, a number of pods to do various types of things. There's, there's three key ones here. But now I'm using that GitOps methodology to manage my Kubernetes environments. It's actually going and pull down whatever's there. So that's kind of that second arm. Now I'm managing my Kubernetes clusters. And really containers is everything today. If you look at services like Azure SQL Database, it's now available to run in containers. So if I have management of operating systems using that first arm of Azure Arc, and I have management of Kubernetes orchestrators, that second arm of Arc, I can really do anything at this point which leads to the third arm of Azure Arc, and that is data services. And it's about bringing data services from Azure to on-premises to other clouds. And there's really two that we're focused on today. It's really focused around Azure SQL Database and Postgres hyperscale. And this is the managed instance SKU. So these two data services. And the way it does this is, hey, look, I can manage the Kubernetes clusters now. I'm going to deploy pods, deployments with SQL or Postgres, hyperscale. The hyperscale for Postgres simply means it scales out multiple instances. Managed instance we're used to in Azure, that's where it gets deployed into our network. So now those two services can actually be used on-premises, can be used in other clouds. And the beauty of that is it's evergreen. I'm not installing SQL Server manually and then updating. It's Azure SQL Database Managed Instance. It's Postgres Hyperscale. It's evergreen. It's managed for me. It's cloud billing. So I'm not buying SQL licenses. It's a resource in Azure that I'll get billed that way. I can take advantage of security features of Azure for these data services. So now I can leverage these Azure data services on premises. And again, it's using that container management arm of Azure Arc to enable that. So when I think about what is Azure Arc, really it boils down to those three components, OS management, be it physical servers or virtual windows or Linux, and installs an agent, now I can use my tagging, my ingest policies, and my role-based access control. I can get log analytics integration. I can inventory, I can search by those tags. I get Kubernetes management. So I'm using that Flux, I'm using policy to point it to a certain source. Then we use Flux to actually point and use a GitHub to pull the changes based on what is the configuration I desire. Finally, Azure Arc data services, SQL managed instance, Postgres SQL hyperscale. I can now run those on premises in other clouds, all through this Azure Arc umbrella. And these are super early days. Uh, I would really only expect this to get bigger, to see more services, more services coming down through that kind of Kubernetes management. We can deploy more things in containers, more Azure services. So I would kind of check this out. It's in preview right now, so I can actually start playing with this. And uh, hope you found this useful. Uh, please give me a like and subscribe. Till next time, take care.